Boom shakalaka. What's going on, everybody? Randall here from Crypto Love. Today, I am joined by Jerry Cole, the co-founder and chief content officer of Bitmovia. What's going on, Jerry? Hi, how are you? Oh, I'm doing good. I'm excited. I took a look at your website today. It looks pretty awesome. You got a pretty interesting platform. So we're going to talk about that. To begin with, what's the elevator pitch? What is Bitmovio? So the elevator pitch is Bitmovio is the video streaming service for the Fortnite generation. Okay, it's that's a, good. That's it. <laughs> it's a one-liner. <laughs> so what does that mean? Because I looked at that and so, I was like, Fortnite generation. Does that mean they just can't pay attention to anything? Or Well, <laughs> Yeah. No, it's it's a video streaming service um, in the sense that it's like uh, YouTube or Twitch or even Netflix in some ways. Uh, we have video content on the service, but the business model is more of a freemium business model, which anyone who's played games for the last you know decade or so is pretty familiar with. Um, you know, the service is free to use, it's free to create an account. Um, some content is paid, so that's the kind of paid or premium part of it. And we also have our own virtual currency called MobiBits, which acts as kind of our, our in-game currency, if you will, our in-platform currency. And users can earn that and use it to unlock paid content, to send tips and gifts to individual creators they like. Um, and they can also earn it by doing things like watching ads and even engaging on the site, watching videos, commenting and doing things. So we're creating that reward mechanism to help incentivize our users to you know, visit the site, come back, um, much the way games have been doing so successfully. And the way our users are now, frankly, are very accustomed to um, you know, those who have been playing Fortnite and kind of that young millennial Gen Z generation. All right. Awesome. Uh, so you have worked for a lot of interesting companies. I mean, you've been a, yeah. uh, you've held like a senior exec position at Netflix and Amazon, and also yeah. you're a consultant for Twitch. So uh, tell us about that. Yeah, so I, uh, I've been in the entertainment space for most of my career, the last 12 years or so. Um, and I've kind of seen content evolve, you know, in the video space in particular from you know, the earliest days of the streaming services like Netflix and, and Hulu when they were kind of um, you know, coming about when Netflix really made the shift over from DVD to streaming. I joined a few years after that. And, you know, the service at the time, Netflix was very much still a licensed platform. They weren't doing too many originals. Um, I was there when House of Cards actually launched, so I saw kind of the birth of Netflix's original business. But they were licensing, and you know what they were really building and have built, and they've done a great job of of, do, of building this kind of the you know internet's uh, TV channel for the globe. You know they figured out a way to kind of deliver very cost curated um, premium content to users throughout the world. Um, it's going becoming increasingly localized, increasingly um, relevant to individual users. And it just disrupted. It might be hard for people to remember, but you know, once upon a time, television was kind of limited to these primetime slots, you know, three hours a night. And, you know, you had to kind of fight your way if you were a producer or a creator to get into one of those slots. And then, you know, the networks withheld kind of, uh, you know, you're limited to one episode a week, 13 episodes a season kind of thing. And you have to wait for the next season. And, you know, Netflix came along and said, you know, why, why, why are we doing it that way? Um, and you know, I really credit them in a lot of ways with, with you know, driving a lot of the behavior that's now uh, commonplace, binge watching, um, this, this idea of, you know, of everything on demand and, and kind of personalization, customization, which they really pioneered. You saw today Disney Plus just uh, not, you know, launched something that was a decade or so in the works and they probably should have launched a lot earlier than that. <laughs> they wanted to really compete with Netflix. So I've kind of seen the birth of it. I've seen it evolve. And the, the one thing that, you know, to me now, someone in his early 40s, uh, you know, Netflix has built something that's very relevant to me and in my generation. And, you know, it's kind of disrupted traditional broadcasters and traditional content in that sense. But, you know, the next wave, I, I look at, you know, the son who's 11 and I see his friends and, uh, everyone kind of in that generation and Netflix is just another channel. YouTube is just a channel with a bunch of individuals they like. Twitch is a channel, a bunch of esports streamers they like. They're not necessarily loyal to a particular uh, service or channel. And the levels of interactivity that they're getting in, in things like Fortnite and the ability to kind of uh, you know interact with, with both users and in some cases the creators um, is really something they're coming to expect. And I think uh, some of these 
older subscription video services like Netflix have done a great job of kind of disrupting traditional content. But I think content is still in the process of evolving. And there are some like Twitch that are, are doing more than others in terms of, you know, moving it in that direction. Um, I think, you know, the next logical place is, is something that looks very much like a game in a lot of ways in terms of how users interact with the service. And that's it. what we're trying to do with Movio is get ahead of what we see as sort of, you know, inevitable trends in the space. Mm. So, that, so that I think that kind of answered my next question in that being mm. that you've worked for three rather large companies. Yeah. Um, why Bitmovio? Yeah, I'm, I've been a startup guy most of my life. I've, I have worked at some big companies. I've never stayed there too long in part because of what I've tried different startup challenges. I had a mobile game business years ago. Um, I was an early employee at another uh, music video tech startup actually out of LA. Um, I prefer the startup environment. And I think what you know, Bitmovio is doing is really interesting. Um, and I'd rather be a disruptor than the one getting disrupted. And, um, you know, uh, I'm here in Los Angeles and a lot of the industry is still very much run by these traditional businesses that are sort of trying to figure out what to do next. Um, you know, it's right now, today it's compete with Netflix. What, what is it going to be tomorrow? Um, and meanwhile, these tech platforms have uh, really done a better job of, of, you know, essentially reinventing those traditional media businesses, own businesses. Um, and they're looking to continue to evolve as well. So I, I just, uh, I, I have more of that startup mentality and, and, you know, I like to get things done quickly, which is you know, more challenging in a larger organization. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So how do, how does Bitmovio compare to other options out there? To other platforms it's, out there? Yeah. So it's uh, probably the best way to think about it in terms of what's out there and what people know about is a more gamified, more interactive version of Twitch which is not just focused on esports. We do have some esports content, but we are also, uh, we really open it up. We to other content creators. We have some licensed content from studios and networks, um, everything from old reality shows to sci-fi movies and thrillers. Um, and we also have a lot of individual creators, people who you know, create for YouTube or Twitch, come over and have, have created for us as well. So it's a, it's a broader Twitch is a way to think about it with with a, a virtual currency in our case, movie bits and interactivity, which is even at another level in terms of the types of rewards users can get and the type of experience they can get within the service. And then, what can they use these rewards for? So at present, they can use the rewards to um, unlock paid content. So there's you know a bunch of content is sort of like premium long form movies that, you know, creator and, and in our platform, and we'll get into the blockchain piece, I assume, but, you know, we have kind of this, this, this notion of, uh, you know, the creators can decide what to do what they want with their content. So we're not imposing business models or rules on them. Uh, you know, they can make their content free. They can make it ad supported. They can make it you know, uh, paid um, 99 cents, dollar, two dollar, whatever, whatever it is uh, with movie bits for, you know, and there isn't a, a sort of a, existing exchange rate provided they have enough users can actually use their movie bits to unlock content. Um, they can send tips and gifts to individual creators they like, which is a big user behavior on Twitch that works very well. Uh, again, you know, these range in value, but can be as little as, you know, a dollar just to send to a, a creator you particularly enjoy or like. Um, you know, later, that's going to be the backbone of what is sort of our Patreon piece, which is that users can actually crowdfund through our service, or sorry, creators can crowdfund. The creators can put up a future project and say to their community, to their fans, help me get this funded. I, I want to do this movie or this series, what have you. Um, well, interestingly, one of the genres that's really taken off is, is the sort of UFO paranormal <laughs> creator genre. Um, one of our advisors is uh, Sean Stone, who's Oliver Stone's son. And, you know, as you can imagine, is very active in the, in the conspiracy space. Uh, mm -hmm. they're, they're part of the... Uh, I guess, category of, of creators on YouTube who've been either demonetized or outright censored recently by YouTube. And, you know, the YouTube algorithm casts a wide net. And so, you know, while they're going after the Alex Joneses of the world, they're also capturing a bunch of smaller guys who you know, are just trying to make a living and are getting demonetized. So they've uh, embraced us. It's been really neat, actually, to see them come over. And so we've got a, a ton of really good paranormal content in the service mm, awesome. um, right now. But, uh, that's just one of the examples of what you can do with movie bits. And in terms of earning it, you can buy them, uh, you can uh, unlock them, you can earn them essentially by um, doing things on the, on the site, watching videos, watching ads, 
um, and there'll be more to come in that in that regard. Awesome. So why are you doing this on the blockchain? Part of it, uh, it, it initially, we had kind of a, a broad vision to put sort of everything, the entire service on the blockchain. And um, it, it, we were working with a, a protocol called Theta, uh, which is sort of a decentralized CDN protocol. Um, and we looked at ways we could do that. Um, you know, for a variety of reasons, uh, it's sort of a, a network effect kind of space in terms of, of centralized streaming. And so if there, if there aren't enough nodes on the network, it's really going to be a, a very bad user experience. So, you know, we sort of, for that piece of it, anyway, we, we came out with a more kind of traditional structure um, for the streaming piece, relying on you know, your usual CDN providers and, and, and whatnot. Um, but where the watching piece is really interesting now for us is both in terms of payments. So we accept uh, Ether as, as one of our payments and creators who actually accept payment in Ether can get paid, you know, instantaneously, transparently, they can see every, every transaction um, on a ledger uh, on our service. Um, but also it's, it's part of that uh, notion of transparency and rewarding creators. You know, the existing platforms are, I mean, you can go from anywhere from YouTube and Netflix on down are, you know, highly centralized, uh, platforms where, you know, they're using creator data in terms of performance data and they're using a lot of user data, as we know, um, to monetize and improve their other products and services and sell you a bunch of ads and a bunch of other things. Um, and we think, you know, there's a disconnect and certainly a value sort of misalignment between the plat those platforms and their creators and you know, their users are serving other audiences. We wanted to kind of create this almost this thin, flat platform layer built on blockchain where you know, we were we were giving back power to the users in terms of you know controlling the monetization of their content, uh, a lot of transparency in terms of the data they'll see on the performance of, of their content. Um, you know, instantaneous payment without any um, you know nebulous deductions for <laughs> ad sales and, and what have you. Um, and the same thing on on the user side. So you know, that's a blockchain component for now. We are you know ERC uh, twenty token in terms, in terms of Moby Bits. Um, and so, you know, we'll be adding kind of more functionality as sort of the market matures for things like decentralized streaming that we're, we're looking to implement. Cool. So where are you guys now in terms of development? Uh, we're, we've, we're, we've launched a product I and mean, we're available on iOS, Android, and on the web. Our smart TV connected device implementation is coming up next year. That's on the roadmap. Um, we're live. We launched uh, in beta a few months ago. We've gotten good traction. We've, you know, hit over 20,000 registered users and kind of a, it's, it's a bit of a um, tricky metric because you, you actually don't have to register to watch some of the content on, the, on our service. So in order to earn Moby Bits and do things like that, you do. But um, if you just want to go up to, you know, bitmob.io and watch some videos that are free, you can do that by registering. We're seeing, you know, 50, 60,000 kind of those monthly uniques come, come by. Um, and so that's been pretty compelling. And we've seen our mobile, which is the vast majority of our usage, not surprisingly, on mobile, um, you know, we're seeing kind of average watch time of 20 minutes and growing and we're you know, only a few months out of beta. So um, it's very encouraging. And, you know, we've got 7,000 hours of content, again, from big studios all the way down to individual creators putting up one video. Um, and that's continued to grow. So just a question of scaling up and building you know, the business. Awesome. Awesome. So you have a uh, crowdfunding that's going yeah. on right now. Tell us about that and also why you're doing that. We thought it would be an interesting way, um, you know, where we're at this uh, inflection point where you know, we definitely are, are in, need to raise some capital, um, but, you know, at, at an amount to kind of sustain us where we are and, and, you know, continue to grow our content base, our user base, um, and improve the product. And we wanted to kind of in the spirit of building on this product on blockchain and, and embracing, all, you know, the fundamental tenets of it, we wanted to kind of allow the entire community to participate. So, you know, that every, everyone from our early seed stage investors to, you know, individual users who just jumped on board today and checked out the site. And everyone's open for, you know, a minimum investment of $100. You can, you know, be an owner of the community. Um, and we just thought it'd be a neat way. And, you know, fortunately, the laws have evolved in the U.S. and elsewhere over the last few years to permit something like that. It would have been possible, you know, years ago. Um, we think it just fits in the spirit with what we're trying to accomplish. Um, and what certainly, you know, you won't see from a YouTube anytime soon. Um, so that's why we're, that's why we're embracing that funding model for this. Problem. Awesome. And people who are interested in that, where can they find it? 
go to netcapital.com. That's the platform we're using, netcapital. It's a, a, a crowdfunding platform out of Boston. Uh, netcapital.com slash company slash Bitmobio, B-I-T-M-O-V-I-O. And you'll see everything about it, probably more detail about the company than you'd want to read, but it's all there. Um, and you can see everything about our team and, and product and traction and everything else. Okay, awesome. Uh, anything else you think people should know about Bitmobio? Uh, yeah, come check us out. You know, let us know what you think. We're, we're eager to hear customer and user feedback at all times, and, you know, trying to get the product as good as possible and improve it every day. And so, you know, come check us out. Bitmob.io <laughs> is a place to go and um, check out our crowdfunding page if you want to own a piece of this company. Cool. Jerry, thanks so much for joining us okay. today. Thank you very much.